¿Qué tal amigos? Estamos de nuevo con una nueva semana aquí en los playos de la Lex. Segunda semana, ya estamos en la penúltima y tenemos ya el primer finalista de la final que es Rogue que acaba de meterle un reverse sweep a Fnatic después de empezar 2-0 y terminar por un 3-2 y estamos con el top laner de Rogue. Estamos con Odoamne. Odoamne, first of all, thank you very much for your time, for your kindness, as I always said. And big congrats because I, as far as... as As far as I know, and correct me if I'm not if I'm not right, it's the first time that Rogue makes that Rogue makes it, makes into the final on the winner bracket. Am I right? Uh, yeah, la last year we we got uh, we got stoned by Mad Lions and we had to make it through through the lower bracket. But now it's actually it's actually the first time that uh, me or like Rogue, uh, the organization, makes it through you know like the winners bracket. So uh, everyone's. Uh, Pretty excited about that, you know. So, but uh, uh, yeah, I mean, you just need to not mess it up because uh, if you play Fnatic again and then you lose in the final, then that's a bit cringe, you know. But uh, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> Talk me a little bit about your opinion and your feelings after the series because you started on a pretty rough way, especially on the especially on the first game. Even you come back it a little bit and you make it possible to the 50-50 on the neutral objectives. But uh, starting a series like that on into a 2-0 is not the best thing to start the series, I mean, uh, as, as I can imagine. How how was the conversation, how was the plan to, or the changes between maps to come back the series? Uh, I mean, even in, during game one, it was like, <laughs> their comp was just really, really OP and um, our comp kind of kind of sucked versus theirs and the fact that it it took them so long to like um, win the game kind of gave us like a lot of confidence, you know, it was like, Bro, if these guys can't win with this comp in 25 minutes, then how the hell are they gonna win the series? You know, it's like, um, well, we just honestly felt like in game one and two, our drafts are like a bit off. We weren't really like drafting a lot of like proactive stuff. And um, going to game three, we felt like we really need to give to, to make a switch. And um, yeah, you saw we went away from the Lulu, we went away from control mages. We started drafting a lot more engaged. I think Trimi had like two games of Rakan. I don't know if he had three, but two games of Rakan that were like really, really, mm -hmm. really good. And um, yeah, it just felt like after game two, we realized that what was going wrong for us and what the changes that we need to make in draft. And we kind of figured out like the. <clears throat> So we somewhat figured out like the meta for the series, you know, we we like started identifying what's like the OP jungler or like what trades are good to make in draft and what trades are not okay to make in draft. And yeah, like our draft strategy changed drastically from like game one all the way to like game five. And I just feel like in games three, four and five, they didn't really, I, I feel like they were just, I don't know, either they were like arrogant or they just don't have the 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 power to change their style or like their drafting style because we felt like they were getting the same draft over and over mm -hmm. and it was clearly not working for them but uh, at the same time it's like maybe they just couldn't do anything else maybe this is just like their what's been happening in screens for them and this is kind of like what they're used to drafting and they don't really have like other solutions or choices and we did you know uh, Uh, I mean, fact, yeah. yeah, yeah, I know, but the fact of being able to pick or to get picks like Ekarim and the fact of being able to drop the TF but being able to counter it with 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 Silas was were one of the keys of the series because I I remember the the games from not being Ekarim and the games being able to pick Ekarim which were the three and four if I'm not wrong were like completely different. Yeah, I mean, <coughs> I mean. Yeah, but but at the same time, it's like they're so pinched. They're so pinched on like uh, on bans because they're like forced to ban. I even forgot like what their three bans was. But the thing is, uh, I felt like we put them into a position where they have to give us the TF, and maybe they're just like not comfortable, or they ban the TF and then something else OP is up. Maybe like Caitlyn or something. Because I feel like um, yeah, uh, I I don't know. It just felt like we were always finding good good trades in draft and they were not really willing to like you know uh do different kinds of trades in the draft because yeah in game five they started pinching jungle super hard and then they still went for the tf first pick and it just felt like yeah marang just 
takes another jungler out of his pocket, you know, he t takes his magic hat and pulls out another jungler, and he's like, yeah, whatever, we still got, like, a better draft already in, like, the first three, and we got, like, uh, champions that, or, like, stuff that looks good for our comp, you know, because uh, I feel like in game three, four, and five, already in, like, the first three picks of the draft, we are, like, okay, our draft has, like, an identity, and it has an obvious style that we're, like, comfortable to play, and we can do a lot of stuff uh, with this sort of style, you know, and, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I feel like they just lack the power or like the skill. I wouldn't really skill would name it skill, but like maybe the preparation to to draft different different stuff because mm -hmm. it is really uncomfortable, you know, because you're walking into a, a sea of uncertainty where um, you're going to game five and you're like the TF doesn't work, <laughs> but then you're already terrified of three other picks and you're like. Do we give them TF? Because Larson is also a big TF player, you know? And it's like... True. It, it's a difficult situation where you... That's where, like, your prep comes in, you know? Where... Are, did you ever... Honestly... You look at... You, lo you look at how the meta is right now. It's like... Does the red side ever get TF? Probably not. So in screens, they would never, ever give TF on blue side. For them, TF is just first pick on blue side. And it's like... You have never been in a situation where you give up TF and then the red side will take TF 1-2 and it's like, what can you do, you know? It's just, they didn't really have answers for, for like the draft, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, despite the comeback and despite the fact of being already on the final for the next week, what do you think you as a team, as a whole, needs to improve a lot, especially from this series? Um, maybe not in first two drafts of like a best of five. I feel like I feel like this this series is a really really big learning point for us in the sense where it will give us a lot of insight into the things that we do as a team that make us good and make us like have power in the games. And I feel like we found that in game three, four, and five, and we can look at this and just be like game one and two. We can look at the drafts and be like, did we have enough tools to win? Is it just too hard to execute? Is it too greedy or cocky? Is it just simply straight up bad? And I don't know. I, I think we just need to take a good look at this at the series and maybe reevaluate our like uh, our, our our drafting process because. If game one and two, we thought those were good drafts, and we got absolutely gapped, mm -hmm. and, and that's a bit that's a big problem right there, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, in a way, it's hard because at the same time, I mean, if we play Fnatic uh, again next week, then um, maybe we don't need to reevaluate so much. But um, if you end up playing like someone like G two or Misfits, then you go into a completely different best of five meta and. Maybe the stuff that we had in game one and two would work better than the stuff we had in game three, four, and five, you know? So it's just. I think we just need to kind of go back to the drawing board and try and find out more drafts and more styles and try to kind of get out the ones that are really bad for us. Like the game one and two seemed really bad against like Fnatic style. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I think, yeah, it's just uh, something to learn from, the, from this series, you know? Mm -hmm. Talking about. The split overall and this 2022 year, uh, Hansa and Inspired left, but the core of the team remained a little bit just the same. And this team was pretty known, especially on BO5, known to not being able to close uh, big advantages, even dropping on on whole series. And this team retaining like three members from the last roster has changed, especially this point, to being able to close as fast as possible big advantages you, you get on the early stages of the game. How? What happened to become at this point? I mean, I could give you the simple or like the obvious um, <laughs> explanation where give me the one the you elements, <laughs> the elements or the element that was creating all of these issues for us with choke time and rogue time and all of these throws. Mm -hmm. uh, well, it seems like I mean it's simple math, you know. If it, like you remove these two and you're good, then that means that one of them or both of them were the problem, you know, so, uh, um, uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> um, yeah, I feel like that's, that's, that's not really like a bridge that I'm, I'm willing to burn right now. Maybe after the finals, that's a bridge I'm willing to burn. Okay. But, uh, <laughs> I mean, 
I, I, I don't know. I, I feel like uh, the old group had like a lot of elements that were creating this sort of like disruption mm -hmm. and this preventing this like sense of unity between uh, the teammates because right now it feels like it's it's quite easy, you know. It feels like everyone is everyone's actually actually a team, you know. It feels like before it was like five people trying to be a team, and honestly, the way it used to work is like we get to twenty minutes in game, and we're like, okay, guys, what do we do now? And then we were just fucking argue for like between each other. Oh no, my idea is better. No, your idea is better, and all of this stuff, and it was completely useless, you know. And now it's just like. People just listen to each other, and it's a lot easier. People like respect each other's opinions. People actually, actually respect each other. And I feel like this lack of respect that we had last year was the main issue within the roster, and why we were like choke time and choke and all of these like uh, memes created around. All of these like memes created around us, just because it, it was all coming from like you know just just lack of respect. We were not respecting each other. Mm -hmm. uh, as like you know being the best teammates possible you know there was always like someone who was mad okay so although uh hopefully i have more time to to ask you but but there's a lot of people still waiting for an interview so thank you very much for your time and hope to being able to talk to you again after the finals let's see what happens there Thank you yeah, very much. Let's see. Thanks for having me. Bye y bye. Y ahora ya sabéis, chicos, si os ha gustado la entrevista, nos dais un buen like, un buen sub y nos vemos al siguiente. Hasta luego.